Hey folks, it's Lev. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new, I use he and pronouns. The sun is really bright and it really hurts my eyes, but then it lights up my face and it's nice lighting, so I'm just gonna tolerate it for the sake of this video. And I'm in my car because I drove to work today. Um, yeah, um, there's like in Victoria now with current lockdowns, um, you need to have an authorized worker permit in order to travel beyond the 5, 10 k's of your house. So I have one of those, so that's why I chose to work and went to the office. It was nice seeing humans again. Yes. And I also just bought this. It's like dried squid, but it, it, okay, the lighting is lighting it up. Like it actually looks burnt. It looks like it's burnt squid. Um, the lighting tells otherwise, but it was actually dark in color. It looks like it's been charcoal burnt. But yeah, this was like almost $20. But I just wanted to try it, so I bought it. I guess I wanted to talk about, I guess, being human and I guess how, especially social, just human interaction during this time, lockdowns and stuff can be very a very powerful thing. And I've talked about being human before, but yeah, I just want to talk about it again, maybe elaborate some more points. So I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I'm currently running an LGBTIQ plus support social group um, as part of my work. Uh, just a, bit, a little bit more context about my work. I do one-on-one -on -one support with people like with, who are experiencing mental health challenges, but my primary job role is to run, organize, run, and like do group programs and group activities. Um, I have a bunch of colleagues who do primarily one-on-one -on -one support. Me, my job primarily organizing group support and I also run some of the groups. Um, side note, but I'm running a virtual Taekwondo and boxing session tomorrow for people and I got some interest which is so awesome. So that's happening tomorrow. I've never taught Taekwondo and boxing online before but this will be a really interesting and fun experience. Back to my group, so I'm also running the LGBTQ plus support group. And it's very much needed because I guess in general here, there aren't as many LGBTQ plus support services, I guess for autofolk as well. I know there are, and it also depends on the age range, I guess, because there's a lot of groups for young folk here, but not many for people of any age really and so part of my work I'm running that group and I'm building the group from scratch okay okay the truck just drove past I'm essentially building this group from scratch like I don't have anything anything given to me and it's like hey I live this is the groundwork you work from this it's no it's literally building this entire thing from the ground up and I'm just gonna pilot this entire thing and, um, a few weeks ago, I emailed everyone who said they were interested. I emailed everyone. I'm saying, hey, this is the group where you express interest in. We're running. I have a session at this time. This is our first meeting, little gathering. Um, no one responded to my email and no one showed up to my group. And so it's been suggested to me that, you know, Maybe I can get better engagement if I start calling people one-on-one -on -one and the lighting's disappearing because the sun's going down. Um, you know, call people one-on-one -on -one or just contact people one-on-one. -on -one so that it's more human. It's not just like me mass emailing everyone and it's just like, yep, I'm just mass emailing all of you and whoever can come, great. Um, I don't know who you are individually. So I've been calling people one-on-one -on -one, um, individually and be like, hey, I'm Lev, I'm running the group the the LGBT group that you're interested in I tell people I'm a trans man I'm also pansexual because I don't want them to think that I'm some random cis head guy trying to run an LGBT group which is not a good idea and it, that should not happen um, if it does then the cis head person should consult LGBT people that's a completely different thing but yes, I tell people I'm trans and I'm pan and I'm running this group and then I ask people what would you like to get out of the group or what would you like to see in the group and then I also ask people what can I do as I guess someone running the group and organizing it, what can I do to help you feel more safe and comfortable attending the group and participating in the group and 
whether there are maybe considerations I need to keep in mind or adjustments that need to be made. I'm really trying to tailor this group towards people and for people. It's not just like me, okay? I'm the one organizing this on my rules. You have to do everything I say. I'm essentially co-designing this group from the ground up with people. And the people I've called and talked to so far, every single one of them has appreciated the call and even me reaching out and just saying, hi, I'm Lev, I'm running this group, how are you? Checking in and then asking them the questions. Like, they all appreciate the call. And I don't even think I'm doing much. I don't think I'm doing much because I'm literally just calling people and just saying, hey, I'm Lev, I'm running this group, um, I'm trans, and is there anything I can do to help to you feel more comfortable? Like, I don't think I'm doing much, but even just calling people and being human and, and actually the one-on-one -on -one calling, just acknowledging that, you know, I I see them and that I'm not just not like mass mailing, emailing a bunch of people and I don't know who people are. It's just the one-on-one -on -one human interaction, just like, I guess it's very validating in a way. It's like, hi, you're interested and I want to try and get to know you one-on-one -on -one and what you would like from the group and stuff. Just acknowledging them individually. I have gotten significantly better engagement um, in general than if I just email everyone, mass email everyone, like the one-on-one -on -one human interaction thing really does work and it it's like I see you and I, I'm investing time into you one-on-one. -on -one. And someone, a human I talked to today said that um, it's pretty awesome that I'm sharing my trans experiences with the rest of the team and just sharing my journey with them and this this human said it's really brave of me to do that and I'm just sitting here just like this is wholesome and I'm also just thinking this is me being me and like I honestly didn't know how to reply to people because I don't know how to reply to compliments and kindness and wholesomeness like this I've just yeah and earlier on in my job like i'm i was really reluctant and scared to call people one-on-one -on -one because i keep pressuring myself to you know always know what to say and have all the answers and stuff like that but then as i started calling people like i get i i get nervous calling people and sometimes i tell people i get nervous calling people for the first time and i'm really vulnerable about that and honest about that and I mentioned the other video, but I didn't pretend to be like some perfect professional who is not human. Like I'm honest, like I'm, I get nervous calling people for the first time, so I, I apologize if I'm a bit awkward, or or such. Yeah, and then the more I did it, the more I start to like it now, and now I just love doing like you know calling people one on one, just having human chat with them. It's not like it's just checking in, be like hi, how are you doing, and just being human with other humans essentially is part of the why part of the reason why i love this job so much and doing this and you know i, I today i didn't have all the answers i was just sitting there i was sitting there in science for like five seconds before i knew how to respond i'm just like we'll google it together it's just i can be honest with people i don't have to pretend to be perfect i'm just saying you know i don't have if i don't know the answer i will say i'm not sure but you know we can work together to navigate this uncertainty and work through this together and that is it's it's important to say and it's like they the people i work with don't expect me to have all of the answers and just me being honest saying i'm not sure but we can work through it it's like it's a great thing this part links into just talking to humans in general, not just in my prof professional role, but it's okay if we don't know what to say, and it's okay if we don't have all of the answers. Like, we don't have to have all of the answers to be, and like, to be helpful, for lack of better words. Like, even for example, just sitting in silence with someone can be a powerful thing. Just sitting in the dark with someone, sitting with the feelings of sadness, discomfort, anger, whatever the person may be experiencing, just sitting with them with these feelings in silence can be a powerful thing in of itself. It's just like they're not alone in this and that there's another human next to them navigating this with them. Like 
yeah that that's powerful another example is we can say i'm not sure how to respond or i don't have the answers but you are not alone and we can work through this together and we can travel this path together and something i like to say is i'm in your corner rooting for you and regardless of what happens and regardless of whether you have good days bad days or days where you extremely motivated and like go and do a lot of things or there's days that you just trying to hold on and survive and you don't feel like doing much or days where you feel just down i don't know just regardless of what happens and what the person's experiencing at the time i say like it doesn't change the your strength and resilience and how how much fighting you, spirit you have like it just having bad days doesn't invalidate all of your strength and resilience essentially it strength and resilience does not change I guess it's not determined by bad days. Read something I sent to someone I work with yesterday. Um, so it goes, I'd like to acknowledge that it sounds like you are going through a rough time at the moment from our chat yesterday, in brackets, and it's okay to be experiencing certain emotions or a mixed bag of emotions. I'd also like to say that you're, you opening up to me about how you're traveling and being vulnerable with your experiences is very brave and it takes strength. Thank, thank you for that. Next paragraph. It is okay to be human and experience periods where we don't feel like doing much and just survive through the day. Our experiences may not be identical, but I've, I, I've experienced days where I, I've experienced days where the only goal was to survive. And if I did that, I accomplished something great. It's okay to acknowledge the wins we have and that sometimes the seemingly smallest things can be the biggest wins. What these wins may look like for both of us can be different but all is valid next paragraph something i've done that i find helpful is to reflect on how far i've come whether it be weeks months or years ago the live today is not the same live one month or two years ago and i continue to learn and grow into an upgraded version of me every day i've experienced very serious medical conditions when i was younger in addition to bad depression and anxiety i didn't know how to cope or manage it. I had no tools, resources, knowledge, or training. Over the years, as I sought support from professionals and people I trusted, my nervous system started healing and my brain started rewiring its neural circuitry. It wasn't an easy journey and there were days I was barely holding on. If I could survive all of that adversity and I had no idea what I was doing at the time, or what I would what I needed at the time, I am more than capable of handling whatever comes my way now. Next paragraph. You have survived all of the adversity and challenges you you've experienced in your life up until this day, and you continue to do so. That in of itself is something to be proud of because it requires strength and perseverance. Life is not always easy, but you are still here, and that counts for something. It's also okay to ask ourselves, what do I need right now? and honor that in the best way we can. Regardless of what you may be going through or experiencing, know that you are not alone and th that you have fighting spirit inside of you. Even on the days where you may not feel like doing much, it does not erase the existence or the validity of your strength, resilience and capabilities on your recovery journey. That took me half an hour to write up and I sent it to the person I work with and he really appreciated it and it really it yeah it really did help him and this is just me being human um i guess the ultimate point of this video is we don't have to have all the answers or always know what to say always know what to do have solutions for everything and sometimes it's even best not to give people a solution but just to sit with them and just be there with them um, and meet them where they at with their experiences. Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you in the next video.